I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. Wait until you see the homes we've got this week, including this Tribeca duplex. And we meet up with Jason Oppenheim of the Netflix hit Selling Sunset to tour one of his newest listings. Plus how this designer personalized her Brooklyn rental through her love of color, fashion and art. But first we visit the Sutton Square townhouse of this jet setting TV host. Welcome to Open House NYC, everyone. As always, we are behind the doors of some fantastic homes this week, including this majestic and historical estate in Larchmont. Built in 1901 with, of course, a seamless renovation for today's living, it features unique finishes throughout from the front door all the way to the Mediterranean style courtyard. Not to mention beautiful views of the Long Island Sound. Oh, and invite everyone because it's got six bedrooms, including this gorgeous principal suite. We are starting things off in Sutton Square with Yusai Khan, a TV personality and beauty executive so successful that has earned her the moniker, the Oprah of China. Her vast townhouse displays a lifetime of travel and entertaining throughout its over 8,500 square feet. Let's join her for a closer look. Hello, I'm Yusai Khan. Welcome to my home. We're at Sutton Square, New York City. I designed this house with a mixture of East and West, with gathering a lot of things that I have bought from all over the world. But being Chinese, I would say that we do have a lot of very good antique Chinese pieces. The front side of the entry door, I had it made in Indonesia. It's made of teak wood and that door probably is one of the most famous doors around this area. When people come into my home, I want them to feel very welcome. I want them to feel that they can look in the mirror and fix themselves. Then they look at some very, very beautiful statues here. And this painting is by my father, which also means that my family welcomes you. This is the formal dining room. This table is a cherry wood table. I have it made just to fit this room. Look at these teapots. They are all from all over China and some of them are from Taiwan. So it's a wonderful way to display my collection and every one of them has a story. I got this fabric that is now made into a curtain and I bought it in an antique store in Paris. The pattern on the wall it's actually a copy of the scale of this fabric. Isn't that extraordinary? Here is my terrace. I use this place to have lunch or dinners, and this you have to look at. This, I had it made in Cambodia. I saw the Apsara Temple, which is the dancing girl temple, and I asked an artist to go there and rub it. So he copied these dancing girls and made into a parapet with sandstone. There is not another private garden like this in New York. Here we are, my library, and it's full of little things that I really like. Like this tapestry, I got it from India, and it's really made of uh, semi-precious stones. You have aquamarine, tiger eye, you have jade, and you have rubies. It's extremely heavy. And this Buddha is one of my favorites. It just gives this room such an extraordinary feeling of serenity. Now, if you ask me in this room, what do I like most of all? I love the ceiling. I commissioned a very talented artist and I asked her to make me a dragon and a phoenix. And all I said is, do it in gold. And this gives such movement to the room I have never seen anywhere else. This is the real grand salon in the house. This room is where we can have some very big events. I can have musicals here. This beautiful piece is actually a 17th century antique piece and it was used to put musical instruments in. This room has a lot of wonderful little paintings of my father. If you look at his work, you know, they're just alive. 
This is a Buddha from Japan. And if you will look at it and you think that it's really very heavy, but it's not. It's made of papier mache. Even I can pick it up. It's just stunning. This room has hosted some of my best friends, certainly some very famous people. It's just given me a great deal of joy. This is my bedroom. It has a huge panoramic view of New York. I happen to like red very much, and I like very much a mixture of red and blue. So this room is basically red and blue. This piece of sculpture is from a Thai house. I bought it when somebody demolished a house in Thailand. It's, it's so beautiful. I just adore it. Thank you for coming to visit my home. I hope you enjoy it as much as I have enjoyed putting it together. I have lived here for 31 years, and everything in here is something that I have put my heart and soul in. There's a lot of love in here, and I think this house is extraordinary feng shui. In Chinese, we say, that's really good luck. I hope whoever that gets it will have the same kind of good luck that I've had. Coming up after the break, we are in Brooklyn at this designer's colorful apartment. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're in the Gowanus section of Brooklyn at the apartment of designer Tara McCauley. Tara treated this place like an art project. In fact, all throughout, she took inspiration from art, old photographs, and travel. The result is an impressive rental that she truly made her own. See for yourself. Hi, my name is Tara McCauley and I'm an interior decorator. Welcome to my apartment in Gowanus, Brooklyn. It's a typical one bedroom apartment in a walk up tenement building, but I took a lot of time and put a lot of work into making it reflect my personal style. So today I'll show you how I did that. As soon as you walk into my apartment, the first thing that most people notice is the terrazzo pattern walls. It's not wallpaper, I actually did it by hand. I chose the pattern inspired by a trip to Rome. I started with a primary color scheme of red, yellow, and blue, and then I added touches of pink and green to pick up accents in the bedroom and the living room, which you'll see. Unfortunately, I don't have a coat closet, so I found this coat rack that almost looks like minimalist Japanese sculpture to me. I get to display all my coats on it. Over the coat rack, I hung a blue circular mirror that I actually found from someone on Craigslist. I think it fits perfectly in the space. When I moved in, the kitchen had horrible lighting. I found this amazing coolie shade, which I hung from a pendant kit, and it creates a very nice ambient glow over the dining table. The dining table is a little bit of a Franken table. The base I've had for a very long time, it was from a restaurant that was going out of business. And now that I had the room, I found the circular marble had it affixed to the base, and I love how it goes with the chrome dining chairs. The layout of my kitchen is completely useless. I'm always running from the stove across the room, carrying a pot of water, it's spilling everywhere, but I'm not worried because the chairs have that natural patina, so I don't have to worry about ruining them. <laughs> The apartment was listed as a two bedroom, but that would only leave me room to entertain in my tiny little kitchen. So I took the front facing bedroom and turned it into my living room. I painted the walls with two different shades of aqua blue. I did sort of a oil cloth glaze, or at least my best attempt at it. I found this gorgeous sofa, it was the find of the century. It's upholstered in a salmony pink linen velvet with bullion fringe and I love how the color coordinates with the aqua blue, and I added a few other orangey pink accents throughout the room. In an effort to introduce even more texture to the living room, I got this great sisal rug, and I even have a woven desk. And of course, no entertaining space is complete without a well-stocked bar cart. The 
The bedroom is in the rear of the apartment and it gets very little light. Since the bedroom is so small, I put a lot of thought into what color to paint the walls. With the dark blue walls, it feels like being at the bottom of the ocean. It's very cozy to fall asleep in. The headboard was actually vintage and I reupholstered it in an acid green leather that I found in the garment district with a brass nail head trim. I also love how the red Chinese lacquer side tables pop against the matte navy blue walls. I found this amazing triptych of Jean Lersat rooster lithographs. So I had them reframed in gold leaf to coordinate with the nail heads on the headboard. I hope this tour has inspired you to bring a little bit more of your personal style into your home. Go bold with unexpected colors, patterns, textures, and lighting. Thanks for stopping by. Don't go anywhere because just after the break, we are with Jason Oppenheim of the Netflix hit Selling Sunset at his newest listing. Welcome back. Now we're in Corona Del Mar, California with Jason Oppenheim of the Netflix hit Selling Sunset. He shows off one of his newest listings, a contemporary entertainer's dream palace. Take it away, Jason. Hi, my name is Jason Oppenheim from the Oppenheim Group. Welcome to 1215 Dolphin Terrace in Corona Del Mar. This location is as prestigious as it gets. You've got the views of all the boats going by in the harbor. You've got a beautiful, large-scaled house, 8,000 square feet, completely contemporary, brand new. Let me take you guys inside. So as soon as you walk in the house, you're immediately struck by this grand foyer. You've got glass railings leading to your downstairs. You've got a skylight allowing an abundance of natural light coming in. And you're looking over the entire ocean and the harbor. So this is the heartbeat of the house. We're walking into the living room, and this is the grandest scale in the property. This is where you're gonna wanna hang out. And the builder, he wanted to make it a very warm contemporary. So we have poured finished concrete flooring, and he's got walnut steps and a walnut ceiling, and brings the natural elements into the house. This is the best view in all of Corona Del Mar. You've got Lido Island and the entire ocean behind it. Enjoy this, because this is epic, this is unique. So this developer, Kaz Luxury Homes, he brought in the finest finishes. He flew in somebody from Italy to measure the cabinets and then go back, create everything over in Italy and then send it back here, importing Belemi marble, poured finished concrete on the flooring. And as you can see here, this is a very industrial but very warm and soft contemporary kitchen. What's unique about this developer is that he built amazing resorts in Europe and he brought a lot of that style to this home. Let me take you guys downstairs where you can see that confluence. So this is the entertaining area where you've got a bar and you can watch TV. So I was mentioning upstairs about how this developer would build resorts. And this is what I'm talking about. This is what he brought into this home. Like this was meant to look like rusted steel. I absolutely love this. I, I love the color palette. I love the LED lights. You've got this stone, wood, steel, opening up to this infinity pool. This is where you feel like you've just walked into an amazing hotel or resort in Europe. So it's very rare on a house on the front row like this to have a yard so expansive, let alone a pool this wide with an infinity edge. You can have hundreds of people with you. Look at all this space. But when you really want to get alone, you go to the owner's suite. And that's what I want to show you guys last. So when you're tired of entertaining all your friends, this is where you go. You seclude in your owner's suite. So the developer here did floor to ceiling windows. Why? Because look at all the natural light in here. Not only of course do you get the view, but you don't even have to have the lights on because it's always bright all day long. So the bathroom also takes advantage of the natural light by having a huge window behind me that lets all of the light in. And then when you want privacy, you just flip a switch and it closes off. I hope you guys enjoyed the tour. There were lots of amazing things to see inside. I'll see you at the next house. Coming up in just a few, we are in Tribeca at this impeccable loft.
We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now we're in Tribeca to tour this stately penthouse duplex designed by architect Stephen Harris. This is a modern homage to the old lofts for which the neighborhood is so known. It combines stylish open spaces with an abundance of light and dramatic views. Take a look. Welcome to the penthouse at 408 Greenwich Street in Prime Tribeca. I'm Diane Sutherland with Douglas Elliman Real Estate, and I would love to give you a tour of this extraordinary and unique penthouse, which has been a thoughtful collaboration between the owner, who has impeccable taste, and Stephen Harris Architects. This elegant penthouse is a rare combination of space, light, and dramatic views, and a truly unique feature, which I'll show you later. The level of finishes throughout are of the highest quality, beginning with this Jean Prouvé inspired custom made door, which is made of bronze and glass, which welcomes you from the keyed elevator into this lovely entry gallery. And the attention to materials also include ceruced oak and Corian walls. From the foyer, you walk into this expansive, 40 foot long great room flooded with light from 14 oversized arched windows facing south and east, overlooking Tribeca and Lower Manhattan. Each space has its own identity, including several stylish sitting areas where you can relax, dine, perfect for entertaining a large gathering or an intimate dinner for two. The open chef's kitchen, efficient as it is beautiful, features Korean custom cabinetry, two inch thick marble countertops, and an imported French lava stove. And for the ultimate in cooking, the La Cornu range. But my favorite feature is a stainless steel scullery kitchen, so you can entertain and hide all the mess from your guests. The primary bedroom faces south and west for incredible sunlight and tranquil sunsets over the Hudson River. This completely private ensuite includes an office, two gorgeous walk-in closets, and the primary bath is wrapped in silver travertine and includes a cast iron tub. But after all, this is a duplex, so let me take you upstairs. And see all these shelves? They're suede. Welcome to this spacious media room with a wall of south-facing windows inviting you to walk directly out to the terrace garden, which is designed by David Kelly of Reese Roberts. And the terrace has four pleached hornbeam trees. A little side note, they're known for their mystical heritage. One more thing, they are a landmark in Tribeca. Morning, midday, and evening, this residence offers spectacular views, rich in color, and dazzling city lights. Thank you for taking a look at this exquisite Tribeca penthouse. Thanks for watching. Like what you see on the show? Well, be sure to subscribe to our channel. We have so many more beautiful homes to share. It's all about love. Share these homes, you know?